Authentication is super, super important and it can be tricky to do right. But I've realized sometimes you really don't need authentication and you might be adding it in your applications where it's really not necessary. So I'm gonna show you an example where I thought I was gonna need auth and I just really don't, at least not in the traditional sense. So this is our project deals for devs at dealsfordevs.com if you're interested. And what we have is a newsletter sign up and it goes through a custom flow on the back end that I'll talk about a little bit in a minute that uses resend to send confirmations, emails, et cetera. So what happens is as I submit this, uh, it's gonna say it's gonna send me an email that's gonna uh, allow me to verify this email address. What's interesting is the way we do this is we actually create a token that's associated with that user. So inside of the form, we call a server action and that server action is subscribe. And the first thing it does is just generate a new random token. And then we get the email from the subscriber. We see if the subscriber already exists. If not, we then uh, generate a new subscriber object and then we create that subscriber in the database. And so we can see inside of our database, here's the record for this subscriber with this email. And you also see that it has a token associated with it as well. So this token is basically all the authentication that the user, the subscriber needs to be able to validate their email address or confirm their email address and then to update their preferences later on. So you can't see this, you can't see preferences yet because we haven't actually validated this email. So if I open up my email and then copy this and open it, then what we should see is this is gonna go uh, behind the scenes and actually take that token and then validate that email and confirm that that email address is uh, correct. And then from there, I have access to updating my preferences on which emails I want to re receive. So I can get rid of, hey, I don't care about tools. I can update these preferences. And now I'm not going to get emails about tools. I'll only get it for conferences, miscellaneous, ebooks, courses, et cetera. So I thought this was really interesting because all we do behind the scenes is generate a token, save it in the database associated with that subscriber. So we have the uh, token here. We have the email that they signed up with. And then we start with a status of unsubscribe just as a regular string. And then as they go through this validation process, and we can see this inside of the validate route, we grab the token, we uh, get a subscriber by that token, and then we update uh, that subscriber to be verified. Now inside of here, we're just updating the verified property to be true, and then the status to be subscribed. So we, we never had to do any specific auth in here. And if you think about it, this is how most of your email uh, subscriptions work. You typically don't have an actual account associated with the newsletter that you're subscribed for, but you still do have access to unsubscribe and then to preferences. And this is how this works. It's just some sort of token associated with your account. Now, what we'll do is when we send emails, I think inside of uh, source emails, we will include that link in any future emails that you may get. So in this case, we've, we have the link here that just shows up in the confirmation email. But when we send future emails with the deals, at the bottom, we'll just have a link to unsubscribe and then a way to update your preferences. So you won't have to remember, obviously, what your ID is. You'll just be able to go to your email, open up that link, and it'll take you directly to this page where you can update those preferences. So we kind of debated a lot about how much authentication would go into this, and the stakes here are relatively low. And I think that's something to consider when you're factoring in authentication is what's what are we vulnerable to and how vulnerable are we? Like, what's the worst that can happen? So the worst thing that can happen here is if somehow somebody got a hold of the email with the token and they used it, they could unsubscribe from things that you think you're uh, subscribed to, or they could subscribe to things that you think you're not subscribed to, if that makes sense. So the stakes here are really low, and this is just an example of something where we really just didn't need auth. Now, another thing that I actually uh, had this realization for recently, let me look up uh, my node bot in bun. And I have a, a front end project for this. So let's go to the front end and let's run this front end project. So this is for my stream overlays. So if I go to localhost 4321 overlays and talking, for example, when I stream with OBS, this is the page that gets loaded and then my content sits on top. So you see my uh, camera will be here. And then if I were to go to coding, you can see the overlay for the desktop and then for uh, my webcam. And then I also have an admin page. Now what's interesting, or actually, sorry, uh, overlays admin. Now, originally I had this deployed uh, to Netlify and it actually is still there. So if I go to my regular site, so jamesuquick.com slash overlays slash admin, I did a little hack here 
that is authentication, but without really doing authentication. So if I try to update this and I don't pass in my super secret key, I'm going to get back an invalid key. So all I do is just save an environment variable inside of Netlify. That's some sort of key password, basically. And then I just type that thing in here and then it's going to compare the thing that gets submitted in the form with the thing that's stored in the database. So it's the, the most simple authentication that you could possibly think of is just who has the key to be able to do this. But someone mentioned like, hey, if you don't deploy that and you just run your overlays locally, you don't even have to worry about doing authentication because it's just you on your machine. So if I updated this to uh, live programming, for example, and now submit, it doesn't have to do any specific up or check of authentication or a key or anything like that. This would just save this information in the database. And this is part of uh, in the Zeta database as well. So I have a project for uh, JQQ streams overlays, and it just has settings for different things in here, like who a guest is, what the title is, who the sponsors are, et cetera. And so that just works. So I just thought it was interesting that like maybe by default, sometimes we assume we need authentication. And then when you really break it down, it's like, oh, we don't actually need that. And I think if you don't really need it, adding authentication is uh, is too much. It's just unnecessary stuff. Now, the interesting thing about Deals for Does is for the admin part, we actually do have full authentication. So you can actually see I'm logged in here and you can see my account uh, that I'm associated with. So I'm logged in and I can see this dashboard. And because I'm specifically an admin, I have access to uh, manage these deals. If I were to log out of this, it'll take me back home and you'll see that stuff disappears as you would probably expect. So for different pieces of your application, you may need auth in one place, but you may not need it in another. So I just thought this subscribe uh, workflow confirmation email was really interesting. I'm actually thinking about doing a full tutorial to show you how to do this using server actions, using resend to send emails, et cetera. So if you're interested in that, you think that would be cool, let me know in the comments below. And then if you're interested in updates for Deals for Devs, you can go to dealsfordevs.com and subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, we are working on aggregating deals and shipping some new features to have this ready in the next month or so. And then we'll actually start uh, sending out deals on a monthly basis for conferences, courses, eBooks, anything you're probably interested in. So if you're interested in that, check it out at dealsfordevs.com. Maybe this gave you a little interesting take on authentication in your applications in the future. It may save you some time, who knows, but hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.